morning. We want the, the presence of God to just fill this room. And so, Father, right now, we welcome your presence this morning. Father, we welcome your presence this morning, God. We make up our minds to worship this morning. We made up our minds to praise you. We decided to leave our house, to travel, to come into this house to worship you. We sanctify this house with our praise this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We sanctify this place with our worship this morning. That the name of the Lord will be exalted in our lips today, God. God, take joy in what you hear. God, let our worship be a sweet sound in your ear. Let the testimony of our praise, God, ring out throughout the atmosphere today, God. Father, we declare your hedge of protection over our city. We cancel the works of darkness. We come against the spirit of death and we cancel its assignment against Port of Spain. In the name of Jesus, we lift up a standard of worship and a standard of praise this morning. We mash up every assignment, everything that was meant to hinder our worship this morning, everything that was meant to block our praise, everything that was meant, oh God, to bring an obstacle. We come against stubbornness. We come against bad attitudes. We come against, oh God, having a, a spirit of pride and self. We, we cancel those things, oh God, that will hinder our praise today, God. God, if we acted in ways that, oh God, that does not honor you, God. Lord, we repent this morning. And we say, Lord, be merciful to us today. So that you will hear our praise. That you will hear our worship. That you will hear, oh God, the voice of your people. This morning we worship with every fiber of our being. We declare that you are God and beside you there is none other. We sanctify this house. Every corner, God. Every corner must feel the presence of the Lord. We rebuke the plans of the enemy today. Every assignment sent, we send it back. In the name of Jesus, we declare that this is holy ground. We declare this is holy ground. We declare this is holy ground. We declare this is holy ground. Let your will be done this morning. Let your plans come to fruition. We are ready to worship. We are ready to praise you today, God. Touch the musicians, God. Touch the singers and the worshipers, God. Touch the people as we lift our voice in praise. God, this morning we invite you to just lead us. Let us be led by the Spirit of God so that we can worship you in the best possible way. Let us be led by the Spirit of God so that we can see where we are going. Let us be led by the Spirit of God so that we can receive what you are releasing to us, God. We know you speak to us through your Spirit. So let your Spirit speak to our Spirit so that we, oh God, will come in alignment with what you're doing in this city. We are taking, oh God, a tour over every principality we come against every power we come against spiritual wickedness in high places we come against agendas of the enemy we come against strongholds we pull down every stronghold every high thing that exalts itself against the name of our God must come down in the name of Jesus every high thing against the name of our God must come down and so we welcome you into this place as we reverence the presence of God. God, if you can't change us, nobody can. If you, can't, if you cannot humble us, nobody can. That if we're still lifting up our voices and pride, then nothing will happen. And so we meditate on you this morning. And we say, Lord, forgive us. Forgive us. Forgive us, oh God. Lord, be merciful this morning. And so, Lord, we put everything into your hands. The word, I thank you for our visiting minister who's here, we release the word. We pray for him. 
and his wife and we thank you for their ministry yes church in misery and so God in the midst of it we are saying thank you thank you Lord thank you Lord for orchestrating this divine moment and we are open to receive in Jesus name amen I'd like to welcome our all those who are here with us, amen. Uh, welcome all uh, those who are viewing online. Welcome to Kingdom Community uh, Fellowship Foundation. We are live on Facebook, Kingdom CFF. Of course, on YouTube as well, Kingdom CFF. You can get us, amen. And of course, we are glad to be in the house this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it as we welcome our youth worship team to come lead us in worship this morning. Come on, put your hands together for them. Hallelujah, Jesus. We have came to rejoice this morning. We came to rejoice in you, O oh God. Let's just worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. matter what comes my way, the greater one lives inside of me. His name is Jesus. I'm born a winner, more than victorious. I'm an heir, I'm an heir, filled with the Holy Ghost. Whoa.
worship God. He is the anointed one. He is the anointed one. are anointed if your feet are anointed and if you're under the blood give me a holy ghost if your hands are anointed and if your feet are anointed and if you're under the blood under the blood under the blood I am anointed
going up high. We're going up together. We're going up together. We're going up to prosper. In the name of the Lord. I am a warrior. I am a warrior. A warrior, a warrior. I'm a warrior. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. I am a warrior. I am a warrior. A warrior. Warrior, warrior. Don't talk, no, no, don't speak. I am a child of God. I'm a child of God. And I've got a victory. Stop, 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 stop. Don't talk, no, no, don't speak. Jesus, Jesus, you have won the victory, O oh God. Lord, you have won the victory for us, O oh God, so that we can have a chance at gaining salvation, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. We're forever grateful to you, O oh God. We bless your name, we bless your name. Somebody just worship the King of Kings and the Lord of us. When you look back, all you can say is if it wasn't for God.
Your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions. All thrones and dominions. All power and position. sing just the voices hear your people sing holy to the king of kings holy you will always be One more time, hear your people sing. Hear your people sing. Holy to the King of Kings. Holy, you will always be. believe in this at atmosphere Jesus. we're going to get ready for the word we're going to put everything aside and just receive for what the Lord wants to release over us coming all the way from Missouri Branford I believe amen is the pastor of yes church he's a guest of Bishop Joel Ali He's a senior pastor. Him and his wife is here visiting with us, uh, with the team that came with Bishop Ali. And it's a privilege to have him to share both here and in San Fernando this morning. Put your hands together for Pastor Chris sure. Jackson as he comes in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Apostle. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. What a powerful atmosphere. What a great anointing. I love your music, anointing and appointing. Everybody say that there's an appointment today. God's got something for us right before you're seated. I noticed when I walked in from the sidewalk, it said to the left, 12,000 volts. You all see that sign when you walk in? And then I notice over here, this must be your prayer room. Is that your prayer room? Electrical room? Everybody lift up your hands and say 12,000 volts in the house this morning. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and praise Him for 30 seconds. We worship you, Lord. We honor you, magnify, glorify, edify. Lord, certify, we praise you, Lord Jesus, in the house. Oh, have your way at Kingdom Community this morning, Lord. Anoint the Word, appoint the Word, speak to us. God, give us ears to hear. Lord, a heart to receive. Be glorified in everything we say and do this morning, Lord. We believe there is an outbreathing of the Holy Spirit and an inbreathing, O oh God, of your power. Receive it this morning, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You may be seated if you'll high five somebody or some uh, touch somebody this morning. Uh, I don't know how much time we have. Do you have time, brother, for me to introduce Sister Tricia? Come on up, if you would, real quick. 
And she's got an India outfit on this morning. We just got back from India. Hallelujah. I tell you what, it was, isn't that beautiful? We, we had seen that uh, in, and, and everywhere I've seen all of it's just been African people. But it says on, on the web, on the uh, on Wiki, Wikipedia, that there's 34% of the population of Trinidad is Indian background, and then, and then about the same population is, um, is African b- background. So uh, we thought we might see more Indians here. How many, of you have India, how many of you have India in your blood somewhere? Praise the Lord. So we just went to India uh, a, a few weeks ago and preached to 25,000 people. It's something I've done a few times there. And uh, as I was going, I said, God, we've got two meetings coming up in India and in Trinidad, and I want you to speak a word to me. I want you to show me something. And as I was praying that, I just flipped on my phone to YouTube, and the first sermon that came up is by T.L. Osborne. Now, T.L. Osborne has laid hands on me. He is an evangelist from the 1950s that had powerful crusades around the world and thousands and thousands of people with tremendous healings. And the first sermon that came up, it was T.L. Osborne, and he was preaching, guess where? Trinidad. And I was watching him preaching in San Fernando, and powerful healings taking place. Well, I got through that sermon, I thought, let me go on to the next sermon. And it was T.L. Osborne preaching in India. So I didn't think it was any coincidence or accident that as I'm praying for God to give me a touch uh, for India and kind of forgot that I had Trinidad scheduled next, that those two nations, out of all of the nations of the world, with a healing evangelist speaking, amen, uh, just gave me a motivation that God's going to do something through us. It may not be this week. It might be in a return flight sometime. But this is our first time in Trinidad, and she has her beautiful India uh, outfit on. And uh, we preached to 25,000. Then when we, when we came home, she got a blood clot that went from her knee all the way to her hip and spent two weeks in the hospital in a foreign nation of India and had to have emergency surgery. But she's healed and back okay today. And we praise the Lord. Say something to the Lord. Praise God. Well, you know, all things work together for good, don't they? We got to stay, yes, an extra two weeks in India. Um, and I never really had anxiety attacks before, but when I'm listening to all these doctors and nurses, and I can't, okay, so I've had a lot of birthdays, so I don't hear as well as I used to. But then with a little dialect, you know, I'm thinking, what are they saying? What are they fixing to do to me next? So, so I get a little anxious about things anymore, but God's working on me right now. And we jumped right on a plane when we got home about a week in between the trips and headed this way. But you know, God is with me. He can heal me. He can, he can give me strength. He can restore my energy. I'm still working on the energy part of it because I'm kind of a type double A personality, and that's kind of been reduced to maybe a D. <laughs> but God is restoring my energy. And, you know, I, I love, I, I love your, the, the Caribbean clothes, and I haven't got to go shopping yet or I'd have had on a new outfit from here. So um, I'm a shopper, so I try to support the economy wherever we go. Uh, but God is good, and I bless him, and I thank him for allowing us. I thank your pastors for having us here today. I love to meet the God's people. You love the clothes, and I love the percussion. Amen. I invite anybody to come drum for us at Yes Church. Amen. I'm going to be real simple this morning. It's not so much a sermon or even a message. I want to just jump back and forth through the, through the scriptures, here a little, there a little. And uh, starting in Matthew chapter 24, and I am looking forward, amen, to this service this morning and in San Fernando, and I want to say how much we honor your uh, pastor, apostle, and I, I want you to do something for me. Keep this in the back of your head. At the close of the service, I, I want you to lay hands on me for a very specific reason, and I'll announce that uh, at the close of the service. I haven't done that with anybody else in the, in the nation of Trinidad, but there's something special that the Lord wants to do for me and Tricia, and uh, I'll, I'll share that at that point. Uh, but anyway, we, we bless you, and you have a beautiful thing here, and I, I admire the energy of this 
of this young man because he's up on Sunday night from 12 o'clock to 3 in the morning. And I got to go and be with him for a couple of hours last, last Sunday evening and uh, believe in God just touching this whole Caribbean with the Word of God that's coming and flowing out of kingdom community. Amen. And I want to zero in on that word kingdom. In Matthew 24 and verse 14, and uh, I'm going to look today, and like I said, I'm just going to skip around today. It's not going to be so much preaching as it is just reinforcing what you already know about kingdom authority. Everybody say kingdom authority. And, uh, and I'm going to look at Adam, and then I'm going to go to Joshua, and then I'm going to talk from David, and then we're going to jump over to Paul, and we'll conclude if we got time with John. I don't know if we have time to do all of that, but Matthew 24 and verse 14, if you're wanting to know when the Lord is going to come back, how many of you like to know when he's going to come back? Chris, are you going to tell me you know when the Lord's going to come back? I absolutely do, because it says this gospel, th everybody say this one, this gospel, this gospel of the kingdom. He didn't just say the gospel, but the gospel of the kingdom. It's not just the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, but it is kingdom authority, kingdom community, kingdom power, kingdom voltage. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. That's what we're trying to do. For a witness unto all nations, and then, everybody say then. And then the end shall come. When's it going to happen? Everybody say then. This gospel of the kingdom shall, not might, shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations, and then the end shall come. Praise God. I'm going to just walk a little bit this morning uh, all the way back in time to Adam. Let's go back to Adam. Genesis 1.26, God said in conference, let us make man, Adam, let us make Adam, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Some of you are glad that you're in the image of God, like God. Everybody say, I'm like him. Amen. Tell him you look a lot like your father. Amen. And uh, let them have dominion. Everybody say dominion. And I like to just look at it word by word. Have dominion over. Everybody say over. You're the head, not the tail. Above only, not beneath. Have dominion over. And then he said, <coughs> the fish of the sea and the fowls of the heavens. And when I think about that, fish is about as far down as you can go. And fowls is about as far up as you can go. Fish is what? I'll make you fishers of men. So we're speaking here about dominion in the church, dominion in soul winning, dominion over the harvest field, dominion over the fish of the sea. Fowls are what? The, 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 the prince of the power of the air. The fowl that comes down to steal the seed of the word of God from your heart. But we have dominion what? Over. How many of you say you're over the enemy? Over sickness. You sang today, put it under your feet. Over devils, over disease, over depression, over death, over debt, over doubt, over dirt, over discouragement, over. Come on, folks, I don't care what it is, I'm over. And I want you to say to the devil, I'm so over you. Say that. I'm so over over you. Did any of you ladies ever had a boyfriend that you finally broke up with, uh, amen, and said, I'm so over you. Why don't you break up with him right now and say to the devil, I'm so over you. <clears throat> so he continues there. This is Genesis 1 and 26, if you want it on the screen. And he has it there. And he said, dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle. That's the domestic workforce. That's the, that's, uh, that's, uh, the people that, 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 that are working to get the gospel out. And then over all the earth. And notice his statement. And over every creeping thing that creepeth on the earth. That's talking about lizards and snakes and green anaconda and everything else that goes with it. But I want to look at that thought today, every creeping thing, praise the Lord. And that's what? Creeps. Everybody say, I got victory over creeps. Creepy stuff. Creepy, crawly stuff. Amen. Now, here's what I want to build into talking about Adam, then I'll move to Joshua. And in Adam, what happened? His wife is standing there talking to a creep. Come on, saints. What happened? Satan slithered into the garden. Amen. He's a creeping thing. God gave Adam dominion over creeping things. He creeps into the, 
into the garden. See, every divorce happened because something creeped in. Every church split happened because some creep got into the picture and creeped in. They always slither in in a way that's hard to detect. And the next thing, he's talking to his wife. It's interesting that the devil always tries to uh, alienate and pull you aside to where he can get you into a private conversation with him. But here's the problem. It says when she took the fruit that she gave it to Adam or her husband with her. Here's the hard part about it, folks, or the, the, the ridiculous part about it, is that Eve was not alone when she took the fruit. She handed it to her husband. My question is, why was Adam not taking dominion over creeps in the garden? Every problem we have in the home, we have in the church, we have in the society, we have in the nation of Trinidad or the nation of the United States is the fact that men, Adam, created in the likeness and image of God, have not stood up for your wife. You've not stood up for your nation. You've not stood up for your family. She's taken the fruit. He's just standing there. Come on, folks. It's time to quit just standing there. It's time for somebody to stand up, stand out, and say in the name of Jesus, I think the song said, Stop! Everybody put it out there. Stop! And so what happened? There's several things there. Number one, there was a tree. Then there was a trial. Amen. God always brings us to the tree. Then he gives us the trial. Are you going to obey me? There was a traitor. I know Satan had left heaven, heaven's glory and was a traitor. There was a tree. There was a trial. There was a traitor. And then there was what? There was a tragedy. The worst tragedy that ever happened in, here, in this planet was when man disobeyed God and listened to a creep. And then with the tragedy, amen, there was a terrible, uh, a terrible tragedy, but God turned it around. Go to the third chapter with me today. Go to the third chapter of Genesis, verse 15. Genesis 3 or verse 14. Go to verse 14 if you can put that on the wall. God says in the midst of the tragedy, there's going to be a triumph. Everybody say, hallelujah. Praise God. And, and what happened? Look at this. The Lord God said to the serpent, that's who? Who's the serpent? Okay. Because you have done this, you are cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Notice it. Say it with me. Upon your belly you shall go all the days of your life. And or, uh, you shall go and dust shall you eat all the days of your life. Notice this, folks. The devil is supposed to be where? He's not supposed to be flying the friendly skies of United. Huh? We see him in Ephesians as the prince of the power of the air. How did he get up there when God said you're to be on your belly, under our feet, amen, biting the dust? Somehow we let him off the ground to where he has now taken his perch or his seat in the heavenly realm. What happened there? Somebody quit taking dominion. Somebody lost authority. Somebody didn't know who they were in Christ. And as a result, what happened? He said, dust you shall eat. Now notice the metaphor here. Verse 19, dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. So he said to the serpent, you can only eat dust. He turns to Adam and says, dust you are, so make the correlation with me. Am I talking too fast? Okay, watch this. He said to the serpent, you, are du you can eat dust. He turns to Adam and says, dust you are, which means the only thing the enemy can feed on, the only nourishment that the devil can get, the only thing that can empower him is when we give him what? Dust nature. Or we give him what? Our flesh. So how is it that Satan from the, on, on his belly ends up flying the friendly skies? It's because what? Man, Adam, has given him flesh. All right, so what's he say in verse 15? Let's go back to verse 15. And he said, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. It shall bruise your head. Everybody say crush. It shall bruise. King James, it says bruise. If it only meant bruise, that, that would be okay too. Because listen, Satan has a great big bruise on his head. You'll enjoy this as much as I am. 
Boy, I'm glad I got to be. And what happened? Oh, the bru- and every time you praise on, I don't know, I wouldn't want to go to a church if I had a big bruise on my head. And every time people walk up and pinch it, and people walk up and flick it, I, w- I wouldn't want to stay in that church. Huh? Every time you praise God, it pesters the bruise. Every time you preach on dominion, it goes up and kind of messes with the bruise. Come over. I know he is Christ. He will be Christ. Calvary has crushed him. But right now, it's just a big hematoma on his head. And every time we praise the Lord, come on, folks, it keeps pestering the bruise. And I've come to tell you today that Satan isn't going to stay very long in a church, in a family, in an Eden. Amen. When you're praising the Lord and worshiping God, he's going to grab his head and run for the door. Somebody say, stop. Hallelujah. Now, it'll bruise his head, but it will bruise your heel. That means what? The heel is the body of Christ. We're the body. The feet are supposed to be walking. If Jesus is the head of the church, then the feet are the last day church. Amen. We're not leaving this thing without a bruise on our heel. Some will die. Some will be martyred. Some will be imprisoned. Some will be persecuted. Some will go through hard trials. We're not going through this thing without a bruise on the heel. But listen, folks, whatever you go through and whatever you face and whatever it is in the Christian life that has bruised you, bruised your ego, bruised your heart, bruised your family, whatever the bruise that you've experienced is the very thing that God will use to ultimately stomp and crush the enemy under your feet. Adam, let's go to Joshua. Joshua chapter 1, and well, let's skip chapter 1. Go to chapter 3 and verse 15 and 16. But in chapter 1, remember, Joshua, every place what the sole of your foot shall tread upon. In other words, anywhere you put your foot down. Is this all right? Joshua is what? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy 5, and then number 6 is what? Joshua. The five is the law. The law is over. Number six, the number of man, the son of man, is what? Joshua, which means what? Yeshua, which is what? Jesus. So, amen. The first five books is what? Moses. Number six is what? Jesus. Everybody say Jesus. We talk about the book of Joshua because what happened in the garden is prophetical, but what happens in Joshua is provisional. Now watch this, folks. Joshua, he said, every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon. Now if the head is Christ and the feet are the last day's church, then what's he saying? Everywhere we walk. Tricia and I walked in India, right? Now we're walking in Trinidad. The other day we had the privilege of walking in Tobago. Amen. One of these days we'll walk somewhere else. But your feet are made for walking too, Joshua. You are a Joshua people. You're a Joshua generation. Put your foot down. Every song we've sang today is about kingdom authority and kingdom community. Joshua, it's time to put your foot down. So let's go to chapter 3 and verse 15. As soon as the feet of the priest touch the water. Look at this, folks. Joshua 3 and verse 15. They that bear the ark were come to the Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were what? Dipped in the brim of the water. See, it's not, it's not big walking and talking authority. It's just putting your foot down somewhere. Just taking a step. As soon as they took a step, as soon as they put their foot in the brim, what happened? Watch verse 16. Go to verse 16. That the waters which came down from above stood up and rose up on a heap. How many of you ever saw water heap up? That's a good miracle. On a heap, notice this, all the way back to is the way this should read. Or in other words, very far from where? The city of Adam. Have you ever noticed that? This is Josh 3.16. Not John 3.16. Josh 316, when the priests put their foot down and stepped into the brim of the water, it drove the flood all the way back to a city called what? 
Adam. Oh, this is exciting. When you put your foot down, when Jesus, Joshua, Yeshua, <coughs> excuse me, put his foot down, it drove the flood all the way back to Adam. Mm. So that means what? When Jesus did the work on the cross, he provided full forgiveness all the way back to the first sinner, Adam. And he cut the waters all the way off to the Dead Sea, which means from the beginning of time to the end of time, from the first sinner to the last sinner, he's the Alpha, he's the Omega, he's the first, he's the last. Amen. He is the author, he is the finisher of our faith. When he put his foot down, it drove it back. And so when we put our foot down, how many of you know, folks, things drive back. Joshua, I don't want to spend much time with Joshua. Let's go to David. Now in Psalm 8, Psalm 8, starting with the heading of that psalm. And I don't know if they can put that on the screen. Probably not. Everybody flip in your Bible to Psalm 8. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations and then... The end shall come. Go to Psalm 8 and uh, look at the, uh, really this psalm is written about victory over Goliath. I know that because of the the heading of it. Uh, Y'all have your Bible open? When am I supposed to stop? I wish the pastor was here so he could throw something at me. Where's he at? He's over. Hallelujah. Throw something at me when it's time. Yeah, just, just, just. Uh, uh, honestly, how, how much time do I have? How much? Half, have time. Have time. I heard it as sounded like half time. <laughs> Psalm 8, the heading, look at this. To the chief musician upon Gittath, a psalm of David. What is this Gittath? It's a musical instrument, and I've tracked down where it comes from, its roots, and where it has morphed to, and that is sitar would be in in Indian, or kitar in Greek languages, or it would be uh, uh, zither uh, in the Hebrew languages, but in English it would translate into what? Guitar. It was upon Gittath. In other words, David said, when I defeated the giant, I had to get me a new instrument. I mean, I mean, psaltery wasn't enough. Instrument of ten strings wasn't enough. I have to invent something that is worthy of the praise that God deserves for what he did for me. So he called it Gittath. And I really truly believe I'm a guitar player that that's the very origin of the instrument that I play is that it goes all the way back to defeating Goliath of where Gath or Goliath was a Gittite. So what's he saying? Gittith means that I have defeated the giant of Gath or the Gittite and I'm going to name my praise. I'm going to name my instrument. Man, I'm getting stuff today, Tricia, aren't I? That you've never heard me preach before. Is just flowing because of, because of the music that I've listened to today. That I am giving you a brand new instrument, a brand new song, a brand new praise, a brand new psalm. And it's coming your way. And I'm giving you new strings. I'm giving you new licks. I'm giving you new ways to do it. I'm giving you a new rhythm. I'm giving you a new beat. I'm giving you a new shout. Amen. And it's going to be sang. In the very name of the one you defeated, get us. Oh, hallelujah. So, I'm not going to take time to walk through that psalm, but he said, when I consider the heavens and the work of your hands and what's man that you're mindful of him and all of that. But then he said in verse 6, you have made him to have dominion. Made him to have dominion. Put that on there. Verse 6, you made him to have Why, why was I made? I was made to have. Amen, amen, amen. I think somebody would like that. I was made to have. 
Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. But I was, I, I have a happy home. I have a good wife. We've only been married for five years. Both of our, uh, our, our mates are, 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 are in heaven now. And, and how do you start over again when you're, you're, you're around 70 years old? How do you start again? Amen. But God wants you to have, we have a house paid for. We have a nice ministry. We have a growing church. We have hallelujah opportunities. You were made to have. It's all right to have a good car, have a good house, have a good spouse, have a happy life, have a happy wife. Go ahead and have it. Say I'll have some of that. <laughs> made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. And then this statement, you have put all things, fish, fowl, cattle, creeps, you have put all things under his feet. Amen. Now, let, let, let's go back to Goliath and see how this Gittite bit the dust. Everybody say another one bites the dust. <laughs> Do you know that song? This one, that, that's what I preach at Teen Challenge all the time. And another one's down, and another one's down, and another one bites the dust. Bump, bump, bump. Another one bites the dust. Say it with me. Bump, bump, bump. And another devil bites the dust. And another one's down, and another one's down, and another devil bites the dust. Clap your hands. Bump, bump, bump. And another one bites the dust. Bump, bump, bump. And another one bites the dust. And another one's down. And another one's down. And another devil bites the dust. Yeah. Clap your hands and say, Praise the Lord. First Samuel, uh, first Samuel chapter 17, when he talks of Goliath the Gittite, uh, verse 5. Verse 4, there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, or Gittite. And I want you to count with me. Whose height was six cubits and a span. Everybody say six. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head. And he was armed with a coat of mail. And the weight of his coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And had greaves of brass upon his legs. Uh, this is King James. I don't know how it reads in other translations. Verse 6. And a target of brass between his shoulders. Did you ever see that? I never noticed that till the other day. He had a target between his shoulders. Did you ever realize that he has a target between his shoulders? The devil has a target on him. Cancer has a target on it. Depression has a target right between its shoulders. I'm going to the heart of this thing. Verse, uh, verse 7. And the staff of his spear was a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron. Count with me. Six. We said six, right? And now what? 600 and one bearing a shield went before him. Now let's count again. In verse 5, count a, a, a helmet of brass, number 1. A coat of mail, number 2. Greaves of brass upon his legs, number 3. Target of brass upon his shoulders, number 4. Staff, uh, he had a staff, number 5. And then a shield went before him, number 6. So what are we looking here? David conquered a lion, then he conquered a bear, and now he's got a target on one whose number is 606 and 6. Do you all see that? Oh, hallelujah. I'm not going to get to the rest of the message. I think we could shout a little bit right here. And so he gets five smooth stones. Come on, folks, out of the, out of the brook. I got mine out of the book. He put them in his script. We have them in their script. Sure. 
He had five. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. That's all he had was five. We have 66. I hope you've got them smooth. I hope they're smooth. I hope you've got into the word until it's got smooth. I hope you're so full of it that you can preach it smooth. You can speak it smooth. Because not only is this prophetical, not only is this provisional, but this is professional. You have to learn how to profess the word of God. You have to know how to speak it. And so he took five. How you know, folks, God can defeat the devil with the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. God wants to raise up in this David generation. Yes, Adam will be restored in last Adam. Yes, Joshua, Yeshua is about to put his foot down. We're a Joshua people, but we are also a Davidic people, and the Davidic tent is being rebuilt, and Davidic worship is flowing again, and we're going to take the fivefold ministry. Related to Israel. Israel has conquered the lion. The, the emblem of Great Britain is a lion. 1948, they broke loose and was given freedom from the lion. The next thing that Israel will fight is the bear. The bear is symbolic of Russia. And Russia, Gog and Magog will invade, amen, that land of David. But as, we, as they got free from the lion, they are going to conquer the bear. But there's a third battle. Not only a lion and a bear, they've got to conquer, amen, the Antichrist. And this number 666, amen, is a symbolism that Goliath, the giant, the formidable foe that stands between the church and its destiny, but more so stands between Israel and the promise of Abraham to, its, to the country, has got to fight these last battles. And when they conquer the bear, the giant is going to be shaking in his shoes. How do you know that, Chris? Let, let's look at it in the Scripture. It says in, in uh, well, look, look, at ver, look at verse 40. He took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook. We get ours where? Out of the book. And put them in the shepherd's bag. How many of you got one of those? I've got 66 rocks in here. He needed five because he's going to defeat the giant. And in 2 Samuel, there are four other brothers, so he killed all five of them. Now, shepherd's bag, which he had even in his script, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. When I say drew near, uh, sister apostle, if I want to come talk to you, I just walk over and talk to you. Right? If it says I drew near, it means what? Maybe she doesn't want to talk to me, so I've got to work my way into this. It's one thing to just come. It's another to what? Draw near. And it says David drew near. So in the beginning of this fight, David was a little... I'm not sure I want to take this on. Is there anybody in this house that just, I know I got to do it. I know he's called me to do it. Everything I'm preaching today is, is, is new. It's, for the last 20 minutes is all. You know you got to talk to that person. You know you have to approach the, 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 the boss. You know you got to go in for that surgery or whatever. You know you got to deal with it. And I, I really don't, not too sure I want to take this one on today. I've got, my, I've got my, my shepherd's bag. I've got my promises. But l l let's move to something else now. Look at verse 40, 48. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came, oh, watch this, and drew nigh to meet David. Pastor, he was as scared as any of us are. 
We don't understand. See, Goliath just didn't flaunt his stuff and walk out into the, into the middle of the valley. When David came, this guy is twice as tall as David. The devil may look twice as tall as you. Your situation may look insurmountable today. But he's approaching you with shaking in his shoes, with timidity, and with fear and trembling. You don't see it on the surface, but Satan is sweating. He knows that he has but a short time. When David, who was coming like this, saw that Goliath was coming like this, look what it says. It came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted and ran. There is a point coming in your life, my friend. When all of the fear, all of the timidity, all of the hindrances, all of the things that have kept you back, those things that have made you shake, I can't pastor that church. I can't go into that arena. I can't, uh, amen, start that Bible study. I don't think uh, I'm big enough for the task on what he's called me to do. Amen. When you understand that greater is he that is in you than he, the giant, six, 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 sick, sick, sick. When you find out, folks, uh, that he's as afraid as you are, then it's time to grab your five stones and run towards the enemy. And when he did, I said it was prophetical because it looked to the cross. It was provisional because Joshua, Yeshua, Jesus paid for it, but it is professional because now something came out of his mouth. Listen to this. Before something came out of his sling, something came out of his mouth. The stone followed the trajectory of his profession. He said, you come, amen, with a sling or with a shield and a sword, but I come in the name of the Lord, and the battle is the Lord's, and this day you're going to be laying on your back, down on your belly, eating dust again, and it ran. Put in a... Put in a stone, gave it a fling. When it left his hand, David, he began to sing. It hit the, it hit the target. Everybody say, hit the target. Yeah. Goliath fell. And the next verse says, David stood on the giant. It's time for us to take our stand in this city. Take our stand in our home. Creep <clears throat> creep get out it's time to take our stand hallelujah in the area and when the church does this all around the world and this gospel of kingdom authority is preached and acted because not only is it professional it must finally be practical Amen. you got to practice it stand up if you would this morning i don't know when i was supposed to close this probably a good time Stand up and take your feet. I don't care if they're a white tennis shoe or if they're a flip-flop or if you have a, a uh, cowboy boot or whatever. It is. And I want you to stand up on it and put your foot down. Oh, hallelujah. Just look down at your situation. What is it? Drugs, what is it? Pornography, what is it? Fear, what is it? Depression, what is it that you've got to stand up on top of? Sugar, diabetes, what is that thing? What is that one thing? That is, what is that giant that the doctor said it's bigger than you? What is that giant, amen, that your own mind and intellect said it's bigger than you? What is that giant that has kept you back? Speak its name. Put it under your feet. Lay it on this carpet. Hallelujah. And put your foot down and believe the Lord with me this morning. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. Everybody in this house, open up your lips. Amen. And the stone will follow the trajectory of your praise. Wherever your praise goes, your praise hits the giant before your stone hits the giant. Before you take the rock of the word, you start with your profession. You start with what you're declaring, what you're decreeing, decreeing what you're saying. Come on. Open up your lips. you got to open your mouth. Before we get to the sling, we got to 
start with the mouth. Start speaking it. Start declaring it. Start worshiping it. Start praising. Come on. Open your mouth. Let something flow. Let something flow. Let something flow. Let something flow. flow. Pastor, come up if you would. You, You know your people better than I. I will pray for anyone you want us to pray for. But I believe that uh, you, you know them better. You know where we can go from here. But let's be, as he's coming, let's come on, open your mouth. We're not done yet. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Declare his word. Declare his word. Declare his word. Declare his word. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. Shout it, shout it, shout it, shout it. They walked around the walls of Jericho, and he said, it's time to shout. When they shouted, the walls fell. When they shouted, every enemy fell. Shout, 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 shout. The Lord has given you the city. Shout it out. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You're here this morning, and you're not in the right place with God. You have not been able to effectively use the weapons of your warfare because your life is not in a good place. The man of God has released a word over you and that word is to restore and to repair the breaches in your life. Some of you have lost your script bag that had your stones in it. You've lost your zeal for the things of God. And you're saying this morning, I'm ready to take back my rightful place. I'm ready to surrender as the Spirit of the Lord will lead me. That this word is for me. I have my giants to fight and I need help. If you're here this morning and that is you and you need help this morning I want you to leave your seat and come join us at the altar because I believe God you need help you need help your situation is desperate ah help help Lord help 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 us. Help. Hallelujah. Help, Lord. Hmm. Help me know you are near your own. I want. You're all I I ever needed. You're all I want. Thank you, Lord. Never let me go. Never let me go. Oh, yeah. I lay it all down again. To hear you say that I'm your friend. You're my desire, Lord. Come quickly, don't miss this moment. You are my desire. Nothing can do ah. without you, Lord. No one else will do. Because nothing, nothing 
Nothing else can take your place To feel the warmth of your embrace Hallelujah Help me find my way Come on, lift your hand and just tell him this morning, Lord, you're all that I want. Come on, somebody. You're all I want. Yes, you are, Lord. You are Lord. You're all I've ever needed. You're all I want. Help me to know. Help me know you are here. Pastor Chris is going to pray a general prayer. And, and I'm going to touch and agree and release you. I want us just to work with us. I believe that God wants to release the atmosphere over you. That help is coming in this moment. That God is doing what he said that he will do. As we continue to sing and to worship today. I believe that God has purpose in the midst of it all. And so as he prays and as we sing, we agree. And we're going to believe God in the midst of it. That God is going to do it today. Hallelujah. You're all I want. Christ, listen to me. Christ's feet means Satan's defeat. Say that. Christ's feet means Satan's defeat. Lord, right now as our people, these people, Lord, stand in your presence. We are asking, Lord, that they will understand and comprehend the simplicity of their position in Jesus Christ. What is provisional, what is practical, must be positional. I take my seat, and you said, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. You said that you have raised us up and made us sit together in heavenly places. And from that seated position right now, Lord, we put our foot down over disease. We put our foot down over devils, discouragement, depression. Oh, God, over hate, over prejudice, over selfishness, over self-will, over ego. Oh, God, everything that needs to be conquered right now across this building from the front to the back we put our foot down and we stand on top of it today we are the head not the tail we are above only I'm above you devil I am so over you say that I am so over you I am over this sickness I am over this difficulty I am over this trial I am over it in Jesus name now Lord God we pester the bruise we pester the bruise. Singers, come up here for just a second. Hallelujah. Let's get that going again on, on A and O. Hallelujah. And I want you to pester the bruise right now. Come on. Everybody praise him. And as you praise him, hallelujah, it's touching his bruise. It's touching his bruise. And you're, bru you're cruising. You're cruising for a bruising. You're cruising for a bruising, devil. Oh, hallelujah. 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 The anointing, the appointing, the breakthrough, the victory day, the moment of deliverance, the hour of power. 12,000 volts. Bam. Release the anointing. Release freedom. God, may there be an unction of breakthrough today. Now, in the name of Jesus. Oh, fire. 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 
fire of God. Oh, the fire of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Help me know you Come on, just give him a crazy praise this morning. Thank you, Pastor Chris. We are believing God in the midst of it, that God is the one who has the final say in it, in it all. That God is God and always will be God. You may have your seat. We want to get ready to worship the Lord with our giving. Giving is an act of worship. We're so grateful every opportunity we get to give. We are getting set on our next baptism. It's going to happen on Good Friday. Good Friday morning, we're going down to the Shakaramas police post for 8 o'clock. And we will have our next baptism. And if you're interested in water baptism, let us know. Tell the usher, I want to be baptized this Good Friday. We get your name down. We get you ready. And we will have baptism this Good Friday at 8 o'clock. And then we come back at the church for an 11 o'clock service. We're going to spend some time in the house of God this Good Friday. And we're going to honor the Lord as we remember his ultimate sacrifice. Father, I thank you for every gift and every giver, every seed and every soul. We give cheerfully, O oh God, because you've been good to us. And so, God, I thank you for every tithe, every tither. Folks who understand the witness of their giving to advance the kingdom and to see the work of the Lord come to fruition. And so, Father, even now, we, we bless the giving of your people. We declare abundance to replace lack and insufficiency in our lives. And, Lord, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. If you need an envelope, you can put your hand in the air. The ushers will get one to you. And so they will receive the giving from you this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. While they're doing that, I want to give you some announcement. We have no service at this location, neither the San Fernando location next week, Sunday. Next week, Sunday, all roads lead to Urban Ministries in St. Helena. We're going to have a joint service with Tobago, San Fernando, and Port of Spain in our anniversary service. Amen. The Port of Spain anniversary service. And it will be starting at 10 a.m., 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. You know, at this stage, you know, you can come, but you wouldn't get food, all right, because for the catering for the food, we had to put it put in the order two weeks ago. But you can still come. Why are you laughing? You can still come. Amen. Not everybody, some people prefer to bring their food. And? Well, all you're looking at me real strange, boy. You understand? Uh, some people prefer, anyhow. We, we have the entire place. Um, there is no limit on numbers now. We have an unlimited number. We negotiated for unlimited. I mean, anybody could come. But you understand, at this stage, if you decide to come now, you know, you have to walk with your, you know. How they say it? B-Y-O-L, bring your own lunch. <laughs> All right? Uh, but we're going to have a great time next week. Amen. We're going to have a tremendous time of fellowship. Um, we, we'll stream the service as well. Try to get it streamed. Of course, our band will be there and our worship team. We're trying to join the three worship teams. So every, every team lead will get an, you know, at least 10 minutes. So 10 for Sando, 10 for Tobago, 10 for Port of Spain. And we just have a grand time of joint, amen, services. Even if we had a we half of the people go be outside of the building, so be it. We we enjoy the presence of the Lord. Amen. 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 To God be the glory, great things He has done. 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Of course, we do lunch at around 12 to 1. And then after that, we will have um when we come back a time of 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 worship and praise with the Brandon Best Academy and of course the various worship ministers in that. And of course, we will give God all the glory. Amen. This is our ninth year as Kingdom Community Fellowship. And to God be the glory, great things he has done. Um, next year, the tenth year, we're going to go someplace even more special. But um, get prepared to put out some money, right? The ninth year, you get it for free. The tenth year, 
Right, okay. So if you do Napa or, or Sapa or, or Hayat, right, so you know what kind of money we're talking about, right? So start saving. <laughs> Amen. Of course, um, you have to put on your name for San Fernando as well. San Fernando is on the first. Um, what we want to do, amen, in San Fernando, um, you all pick up the offering already? Yeah. Are they finished? Yeah. What, are they finished real quick? <laughs> what we want to do in San Fernando is to have a time of fellowship. So we go in according to colors, and you're wearing your church t-shirt. If you don't have a church t-shirt, we'll give you a color. All right? When you come on the day, we'll assign you a color on that day. And of course, we want to have some good fun together in San Fernando, but you have to register. We also have a list on, I see they put it on the wall, all right, of what you, you can bring to, because we're doing it potluck style. Potluck means that, you know, if nobody bring no pot, everybody will be out of luck, <laughs> right? So make sure that you bring pot, right? Because there are some people, you know, you know the story about everybody, somebody, and nobody, right? Because everybody thinks somebody go bring, and nobody brings, right? So we ain't, we ain't going that way, right? Somebody will bring. So we will cater part of it. Um, they're cooking down there and, and stuff, but we, there are some other things that we would need to add to the meal so that everybody can enjoy the meal. And so it's going to be at the San Fernando Church on the first, which is um, Easter Monday, right? The first is Easter Monday. It's a public holiday. We'll be down in San Fernando. We're going to spend the day from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. We're fixing up the upstairs to get ready for that and a time of fun and fellowship. We put the youths in charge. And by the way, I would like to meet with all the young people after the service. If you are young people, what is the cut of age? Because, you know, it has some people who are 65 and forever young, but I'm not talking about these. I'm talking about the be really young, right? Right? So I want to meet with you briefly. Right? We probably would meet in the conference room or something. Amen. Just going to do that real quick. I'm going to just share some things with you as we go forward in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. To God be the great things he has done and so we we thanking god for what he's doing so that's on so make sure put on your name if you need transport from port of spain to san fernando or you're just going to take the bus by yourself that's up to you but if you want the maxi to pick you up here and carry you down to san fernando put your name down of course the the cost of the maxi might be about 40 dollars or something like that all right whatever it is to get you down there and to bring you back we also, on that day, um, we will have a time of fellowship. Um, of course, we're going to uh, worship the Lord as we celebrate San Fernando's anniversary. And of course, the final anniversary would be the Tobago, and that's in July, the 27th of July. Put that date, book your tickets early, um, uh, otherwise you may not be able to come. Amen? To God be the glory. Great things he has done. We have a baby to be dedicated this morning, and so I'm going to ask the folks for the baby dedication to please come. Amen. We have two babies to be dedicated this morning. So please come. When he cometh, when he cometh to make up his jewels, all his jewels, precious jewels, his love and, and his own like the stars of the morning his bright crown adorning they shall shine in their beauty his love and Children are the heritage of the Lord. God sees his heritage in children. As we read the angels, the Bible says, be careful how you treat one of these little ones. It says, except you, you become like one of these, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. 
And he says, the angels that are responsible for these little ones are near to the throne of God. What that means is that God is especially interested in these little ones. And judgment will be swift when you have hurt one of these little ones. We are here to thank God for the safe delivery of Noel Romani and Nazario Roberts. And we are so grateful for um, the mothers who gave safe delivery, Janicia and Jamilia. And we are grateful for the fathers who are standing in the gap for their children. It is a father who affirms a child. The father gives the child his name and gives the child his identity. And the problems we are having in our society today is too many fatherless children. You know, men are not claiming their rightful place as head and as father, as priests of their families. But we are praying. We are praying. Because we are seeing, you know, the enemy wants to destroy family. Because, you know, once the family intact, you know, the church will be intact. And God will have his way. But in the midst of it all, he tries to destroy families. And so for Noel, um, we have as godparents Nicholas, um, Turso, Nicholas here? Not here. Renisha Andrews, not here neither. Kadim Allen, all right, Kadim is here. All right, yeah, I don't watch these godparents and if they can't show up for the, mm, something wrong. All right, for Nazario Roberts, we have Mandisa Kuchlo, all right. Uh, Diana Thomas, all right. Shaquille Paul, all right. Um, Kalim Young, not here. All right, scratch you off. <laughs> oh, she. Hafiz Muhammad, not here. All right, do likewise. <laughs> we want to ensure what you're seeing as parents and godparents, you know, for these children, you're seeing to God. God forbid should anything happen to these parents. We are standing up and you are volunteering yourself to be the parent of this child. And that's a very important vow. Because that's a vow you're making before God. And you say, when you make a vow, you ought to keep it. Say, if you hurt one of these one, it's better that a millstone be hung around your neck and you be thrown into the ocean. You see like how the mafia does kill you? Right, alive. Yeah, struggling for breath, drowned. So this is not something you take lightly and ill advised. So let me just ask the question did Jamelia, Ronaldo, did Genicia or Raphael threaten you guys in any way that you know for you to come or you're doing this out of your own free will? Because it matters that it is out of your own free will. We are. And so as parents and godparents, will you, depending on the grace of God, provide for these children a godly example? Will you set before them godly principles? Will you train them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord so that when they come of age, that they will choose Jesus as Lord and Savior? If you promise to be that kind of a parent to these children, just say, we do. I ain't hear nothing. All right. And so we will, church, are you willing to stand with these parents in the training and, and nurturing of these children? Will you stand as in prayerful support and instructions as needed in helping this child become what God has ordained them to become? If you are, please stand and stretch forth your hands towards them and so give the child to the father and so father we anoint Noel Romani in the name of the father and of the son and of the Holy Spirit 
We thank you for the blessing of this child. This child is a blessed child. We are declaring divine favor over this child. Take care of her food, her clothes, her, everything that concerns her. Let her always feel loved. Know in the midst of it, God, that you are a good God. Provide for her. Thank you for her safety. Thank you that she will grow up well, knowing you as Lord and Savior. And when she comes of age, that she will serve you. And so, Lord, we give you thanks and we give you praise and we bless her in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. We are here to also dedicate Nazario Roberts. And so we believe God in the midst of it that God is God. And so, Father, we anoint Nazario in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We declare that he's blessed. He's a fighter. And today we declare the promises of God. We heard his mom's testimony. You know, what a powerful testimony on, on Friday. Look what the Lord has done. So, Lord, we thank you, God, that in spite of, he is a miracle child today. And, God, you have kept them. And so, Lord, we declare the blessing of the Lord upon his life. Continue to cover him with your blood and release your peace upon him. Take care of his clothes and food and everything concerning his life. And so we bless him in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You may have your seat. How many of you are glad you came to church today? We had a lot of prayer and praise this weekend, a lot of word. Amen. And so we had a visiting apostle. Does, doesn't she remind you of somebody? And yeah. <laughs> well, I hear they are the same extract. So it is what it is. They are sisters. So we give God praise. Amen. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. I'm believing God for some great things. Even as we continue in the presence of the Lord, I know that God has a good plan. We're going down to San Fernando. We will be in San Fernando um, this evening, the, today at 11.30. Amen? This evening, I want to let you know we'll be meeting at the grandstand of the Queen's Park Savannah, especially I know the women are meeting, and we have I've spoken to um, for this time of prayer. We're going to join Reverend Yvette Shockness in prayer. And she's going to meet us there for 3.30. We go just reach a half an hour earlier, if you possibly can. If not, you can feel free to wear your church T-shirts, whatever you choose to wear. But um, we meet in there for 3.30. Ask for the intercessors, and we will pray together, especially for this crusade. Amen? Amen. And so the crusade is open for all to attend. Um, it begins at 5 p.m. at the Grandstand, the Queen's Park Savannah. We are supporting it. The evangelist is here. Um, they already do t did two days in Skinner Park, San Fernando, and so the final night is going to be tonight. So we will be part of that. Amen. All right, so we wish you guys will come. You're, you're seeing the kind of madness that is happening in the city. So more prayer had to happen. Can I, can I talk to somebody? Understand what I'm saying? The, the enemy vex because we lifted up our praise. So we're going to pray some more. Amen. And to see the victory. Can I talk to somebody? Understand what I'm saying? I believe God in the midst of it. On Good Friday um, as well, let me just give you some um, other announcements. On Good Friday after the service, the service is just going to be an hour long, you know, as an hour of remembrance. And then after that, you know, those who are who are available, we are going down to San Fernando to do some cleanup work, get the place prepared for um, um, the Monday event. Uh, we also um, we want to also have the Saturday available. But I didn't want to take take your two holidays or to take the Friday and Saturday. So the folks who can make it on Saturday and to help, so be it. Amen. And let's get the place ready. Um, there's going to be some work that's going to be done in order to get the place in, a, as we say, in a gear, right? Um, in order for us to be ready to use it. And so, depending on the 
on the traffic and the amount of people who will be coming to our San Fernando event, all right? So um, after Good Friday, after lunch, right, we mo we'll probably leave here around 12, 12.30 to go down to San Fernando and to do some work to get it clean and ready, um, painted, power wash, different things to get it ready for our anniversary service. Amen? Amen? Amen. Uh, we try to bring down the bus, so we try to get it down um, for that. Amen. Because I know it's, it's difficult, but I was fortunate to get some boat tickets, so the bus will come down to help transport folks who need transportation to San Fernando. We're going to clean, it's particularly the upstairs. Um, we have done some work, and we'll be doing some more work between now and then, and so we want it, the place to be spotless. Amen? Is that okay? All right. Anytime I say work, or let's get quiet. And, you know, I don't know. I say food. Yes! Work. Okay. Right. I don't know. Let me just... I just me. It's just me. Just me. Right? I always say, oh, God, good Friday, boy. I, uh, I am a salt fish and dumpling to eat. Well, we could, you know, God work on that cross all these hours for us. You can, I think I'll let spare a couple hours to work for the kingdom. Amen? Um, I, I didn't want to take you two days. I didn't want to do and I wanted, I wanted to be around because the Saturday I'm in also in Tobago, so I'm, I can't really be around on the Saturday. But on Friday I'm there, and I like to be around to help with the work. Amen? Um, we're doing some things. I, when you get there, you will see what's, what's being done and to get the place ready for... Um, you know, and we have to, might have to organize. Anyhow, we'll focus on that when we get to it. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Can we stand in the house of the Lord? Do we have any birthdays? Yeah, how about, are they, are they quick to remind my birthdays and thing. I hope I didn't forget mine. All those celebrating birthdays, please stand. Mother Douglas celebrating her birthday tomorrow. Sister Kat, Kat, Kat Lisa, you, you, you celebrating your birthday too? We Plenty birthdays in the house, to God be the glory. So we can sing a happy birthday song, come on. We have a birthday today, we have a birthday today. We have a birthday, we have a birthday, we have a birthday today. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Hip, hip, hip. Hip, hip, hip. Hip, hip, hip. Hip, hip, hip. Amen. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. Any anniversaries? Anybody celebrating anniversary? Amen. All right. The Jerry Myers. Please come. Any other anniversary? Anybody else celebrating anniversaries? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Partner, your wife had to be on your left. <laughs> you forget already? It hasn't been that long. <laughs> All right. I want you to stretch forth your hands towards the Jeremiah's today. We're thanking God for favor over them. We are so grateful that God has kept them, a young couple, and we, you know, setting a godly example in the midst of it. And so, Father, I thank you, God, for your hand over this couple. I thank you for the witness of their lives. Thank you for this woman of God, God, because you have anointed her, and God, you place your hand upon her. Today I declare favor, God, even as she stands as a mother, as a homemaker, as a witness, oh God, as a testimony, oh God, the role that she plays, God, is important to the kingdom of God. And so we bless this woman of God. We speak life and favor over her. We pray for this man, O oh God, the father in him, O oh God, his instinct and the testimony in his life. God, in the midst of it, God, you are God and will always be God. You're going to birth things out of him today. Thank you for their union. Thank you for their coming together. God, put a hedge of protection around them. Bind them together with cords that cannot be broken. Release purpose over this union today, God. 
And so we bless them and we release them today and we thank you for your testimony upon them. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Now, we're going to have to institute something um, because everybody, every other location putting us to shame. Because in San Fernando, they gain non-alcoholic wine for their birthdays and anniversary. In Tobago, you gain non-alcoholic wine for birthday. What happened to Port of Spain? Yeah. So we might have to invest in some cases. I'm uh, putting that in the in the hand of the ushers. Ushers are putting all in charge. Alco Non-alcoholic wine. Amen. A couple of cases. I know in Port of Spain, I know in Port of Spain, there will be, you know, San Fernando might be a one case. Tobago might be a one case, but Port of Spain got to be four or five cases. <laughs> so, as the Spirit of the Lord will lead you. Because if it's four a week, you understand? It. And how much in the case? Only 12. <laughs> right? Now you get your first case. Amen. All right. So beginning after our anniversary. So when we start the new year for us after the month of March, from April month, we will start it. Amen? Yay. Amen? Yay. Some people seem to go retrospective. No. <laughs> Now we can't go we, we forward ever. Backward, Backward never. We're going forward. Amen. We're going forward. So from the month of April, we will begin. All right. And so we will have to present you. Amen. And so those of you who have already gone this year, you will collect it next year. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. How many of us were blessed by the word from the man of God? Pastor Chris Jackson and his lovely wife. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Amen. You know, and it, I hope you all get the fact that, you know, I heard some people talking about starting all over again, you know, at certain ages, you know, to, to be married. And I, I ain't calling no names, but fellas like Pussy and then we're talking, uh, challenging the women, you know, to get husbands. All right, uh, Pastor Chris is only married five years, right? And you tell they were, they were together for whatever. They, they, as he shared, they both, both their spouses transitioned to be with the Lord, and God brought them together. Amen. That's an awesome thing. Amen. So if the Lord gave you strength, Amen. right, Kutos? <laughs> yeah, now I call it no news. I can talk to Kurt. Kurt is my partner. Because somebody go watch me in a kind of way. I'm not prophesying. I'm not saying anything. I'm just talking. <laughs> you know, God is still able to bring, you know, the right person. Amen. Amen into your life. Amen. Amen. Right? If some of you had enough of that. Yeah. <laughs> enough of that. Dust under your feet. As it were. <laughs> All right. To God be the glory. I'm not talking about the married ones now. I'm talking about... <laughs> The unmarried ones. Your husband has transitioned and thing. To God be the glory. Amen. We're looking forward to a great time. Okay, now for Easter Sunday. All right. Um, Easter Sunday service is going to be a special service. We have the resurrection experience on 98.1. So I'll be out in the morning um, coordinating the prayer with the various prayer ministers. But guess what? 98.1 is coming live in our location on, this, uh, on Easter Sunday morning. And so we're wearing white, all right? White, the color of purity, the color of the resurrection. And so we will be wearing white, all white, everybody, all right, wearing white, all right? So if you don't have white, borrow, all right? If you know somebody, always have a, you know, borrow, all right? We want to look good. Um, it will be streamed live on Isaac the Promise Facebook page as well as um, our own um, Facebook page and YouTube channels. And of course, it'll just be an hour of it will be um, broadcast um, from probably from eight to nine or from, you know, somewhere around that time. So to God be the glory. Amen. Amen. And so we're looking forward to a beautiful, you know, resurrection service on that day, the 31st of March. Amen. To God be the glory. 
Amen. Um, am I forgetting anything else? Yes, yeah, so Pastor Chris, you were supposed to share some things for us to. Check. The, re the reason I'm asking you to do this, brother, uh, we're at a transition stage in our ministry. Uh, we feel it's time for a new name. Uh, I had a dream. It's, I don't know how many years ago it was. And in the dream, I was being led into a church of African American. I assumed it could have been Caribbean people. I had two or three pastors or, or uh, ushers or whatever dressed nice walking me back to the office of the pastor. When I stepped into the office, as, as they were taking me to the office of the pastor, the pastor was sitting at the desk. He looked very much like you. <laughs> but he had white hair and a white beard, which meant maturity and authority. And he was sitting looking at his desk as they brought me to the door, and they were saying so-and-so, whatever the name was, uh, I would like for you to meet Chris Jackson. Chris, I have Chris Jackson here to, to, to introduce you to. And he didn't look up. He just said, I don't want to see him. Now, wait a minute. He said, I don't want to see him because he refers to himself as evangelist. It shocked me in my dream, but immediately I knew that to reach a higher place in ministry, there has to be a name change. God has called me to be an apostle. Yes, uh, in the United States, if, if I were to say Apostle Chris, they would, they would be offended by that. In your community, it's accepted because you know the proper gifting of apostle, prophet, evangelist, and teacher. Last night as we had a discussion with all of the missionaries that were there, on several occasions people said, Chris, you are not a pastor. I'm not a pastor. I've called as a visionary to establish foundations and release apostolic authority. And it may not be until I accept that anointing that it will operate in that anointing. Amen. I'm not saying you are the person in the dream, but you look more like the person in the dream than anybody I have ever run across. <laughs> All right. So, so let's so do So I am not appointing myself an apostle today. Amen. But I am asking someone who is an apostle to have the authority to lay hands on me. Let the church stand. Amen. Amen. So you and your wife, please come to the front. Father, give things, anointing, calling comes from you. Everything that we have, every call upon our lives, God, you're the one who initiates those calls. And God, there are seasons in our life when we recognize that this is it. We have to obey because if we don't obey the call of God in our life, we'll be most miserable. Because we, we, we are outside of the plan of God. And so God, I'm grateful for this man of God who has been so humble enough to come and to minister to us. And so we want to minister to them. We are declaring, oh God, the witness and the testimony of their lives. In the midst of it, God, we stand as colleagues. We stand together as co-laborers in the vineyard. We stand together of those who have been called for purpose. And so, Father, you know exactly what you're releasing over his life and, and the mantle that he must, must now carry. Because the weight of it, oh God, is, is, is much, God. And so in the midst of this, oh God, he's, as he's, he's willing and to take up the mantle, be open to what you're doing. We release that mantle upon his life today. We release the openness of his spirit today, God, to carry what you have placed in his heart, God. Only you, oh God, can do what you said that you will do in his life. You call him to go to the nations, oh God, to establish our work. He's already been doing it. So now he just has to function in it, oh God. You say you call us to function, God. Even as we learned this past weekend, it's wanting to come out 
out of the tomb, but we have to be loose to function under the calling of which we have been called. And so anoint your man's servant today. Anoint his help me today, God, as they work together for the advancing of the kingdom. We declare the fire, God, my God, to ignite in such a powerful way, God. And God, bring clarity, oh God. Bring clarity to this vision, oh God. Bring affirmation to this vision as we affirm his faith in the name of Jesus. God, your anointing upon him today. Let your fire fall, God. Let your anointing fall. Let your glory be released over this man of God. We call them forth into ministry. Go forth and do what God has called you to do, oh God. My God, sharpen them today, God. Let fill their scripts, oh God, with weapons, oh God, to destroy the enemy as they go out today, God. Let there be a testimony. Look what the Lord has done. And so we bless them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we thank you, God, for their heart and their willingness to serve. Because it is sometimes a very lonely road. But we, we, when we have been called to serve, God, the voice we have to please is you. The person that we have to, oh God, respond to is you, not people. Because people may say what they want, but God, you are the one who has the final say. And so we declare that witness over Pastor Chris and his wife. Thank you for the witness of the Jacksons as they go out. May God let them go out in faith. And you affirm what you have released to him. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Blessings, blessings, man of God. Amen. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. And so lift your hands towards heaven right now. So Father, today we thank you for the witness and the testimony of today. Thank you, God, as we continue. We have service later on in San Fernando. And all that we do, we will honor you. And so bless your people just for coming into the house of God. Bless all those who came. Bless those who are making up their minds to be baptized and to follow you in water baptism. Those who want to serve you in the best possible way. And so as we go, let us go with the presence of God. Keep us this week, keep us safe. Let this be a blessed week for us. And let us come again uh, during the various services on Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Oh God, and back another Sunday to, to honor you, our special anniversary service next weekend. Put everything into your hands and into your charge in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. You are dismissed. Greet one another in Jesus' name. Young people, we need to see you in the conference room.